Hallelujah. Today, out of the 12 tribe of Israel that indicates I indicate um, the twelve fruits of the tree of life and the twelve bread that Jesus had. We are looking at the hard one, which is called Levi.
Today we are looking at flavor the third one. So we are using as a garden of Eden because this plan of God still remains the plan of God. God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't change his mind. So we are using uh, the secret of the fruit, uh, the twelve fruits on the tree of life. Uh, like I've said, and I've already said it today, and I'm still saying it again, are the twelve tribe of Israel. There are also the twelve stones in Revelation, the book of Revelation 21. There are also the um, um, twelve bread. Twelve bread. They are the twelve bread, they are the twelve fruits, they are the twelve stones, they are the twelve months, the year, and um, they are the twelve tribes. So the only way to explain this, the secret of this twelve thing is the um, tribe of Israel or the church. So you can see the um, the effort of the the best plate, the effort of the priest in the only place it has that effort has this twelve stones. And Bible says in the Exodus that you can see that each of these twelve stones they put what God says you should put. Let's go to Exodus twenty. Okay, yeah. Here's the Exodus 28. Exodus 28. Um, where God said, uh, Moses show. This thing is not out of This is just a little bit. Um, Moses should make a that's twenty-eight from verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning wood. Box. After the work of the effort, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, you know, scarlet, um, and of fine three fine three saline linen. Thou shalt make it four square it shall be. Green double, it's like a span shall be the length thereof. Amen. Um, seventeen, and you shall put settings of stones in it. Yes, yeah, seventeen, and thou shalt set it, set in its settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardine, sardius, which will deep last. 
Topaz and Kabikil. And Kabikil is the one we are doing today. He shall be the first row. So he has four rows. If you read it down, you will see where it says because of our time. Yes. Okay, let me put it out of verse 21. Okay, let me finish reading it. So the second row shall be Emirate and Sapphire and Diamond. The third row shall be Bigle, Agat and Hamitat. And the fourth row, a berry and an onyx and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosing. And 21 says, And the stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Twelve, according to their names. Like the engraving of his signet. Everyone with his name shall be, shall they be according to the twelve. So, so that will be as if I'm just, most, I'm just, Summarizing it without giving you specific places it is in the Bible. So, each of the stones, according to the commandment of God to Moses, each of the stones uh, must bear the 12 names of the uh, 12 tribe of Israel. So, according to God, it's God that can only show us that kind of secret that each stone represents uh, each tribe. Or is the children? I think God is not that even chose the names because according to the Bible, we can see that the names, the children uh, are even more than twelve because we have one female in it. Hallelujah. If we count them, they are more than twelve. We have one female, but we know Bible doesn't really make mention of female in the Bible in the scriptures. Hallelujah. So they are these twelve tribes. Hallelujah. Mm. So, so uh, what God was trying to show us to is that this fruit of the tree of life, this fruit, uh, this twelve fruit of the tree of life, indicates a particular thing. God is the one that started bringing this because God has been looking for a particular people He can call His own. You can see that on the tree of life. We have 12 fruits and because these fruits are together with the tree of life and the tree of life is it is the tree that is of God so those trees belong to God I'm sorry that tree but that particular tree of life belong to God so and that fruit are attached are attached to the to the tree hallelujah so God has been looking for People, you can. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, uh, it's only um, through the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we even know that that tree is. That tree, those two trees, they are sons. They are mature sons. I will use it to, I will teach it before, like we quoted the Romans, the book of Romans, where it says, uh, Jacob have high lord and he is of have high hated. So those are the two trees. And you can see for God to say he is so have I loved from the womb. You know that that tree of life indicates is uh, Jacob. Jacob have I loved, he is so have I highly hated. These are the two trees in the garden. Hallelujah. Because the Bible uses trees. In Genesis, let's use trees. But the exposure of that tree, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, that tree bear 12 fruits. Is only from the time of uh, Hadam, it was only Jacob that had 12 children. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, Let's forget about uh, maybe some children came from a particular wife, like the uh, uh, servant maid or whatever. The most important thing to God is that He He, he wants these children to come. That's why till today, some of us they say, I mean, uh, they say this child came uh, anyhow. God doesn't look like, God doesn't have anyhow child. 
every child belong to God, no matter the circumstances that God that child to the heart. The important thing is that that child belongs to God. It's the God that breathed in that child. He said that child was fearfully and wonderfully made. No matter whatever circumstances that brought the child, any child to the world, every child, either is from a good circumstance or not good circumstance, I mean, either is from perfect circumstances, 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 circumstances or circumstances or the imperfect one, every child was in a womb for nine months. And according to Psalm 139, every child is fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, that's the part that I want us to say. I want us to clear that thing in our mind that, ah, no, yeah, no. every child is, has a purpose of God on heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, clear those things in your heart. Praise the Lord. If you, if you have what you to give back to a child, forget about circumstances, forget about what people will say. You know, when Jesus was on heart, they said so many things to him. So we should be like Jesus. That's how we are made. So that people will not talk bad about you or will not say bad things against you. It doesn't matter to God. Just put yourself together and walk in a path. And you will so surprise the wonderful and beautiful things that will come out of that child. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Imagine a... Uh, uh, Donald Trump, or a particular president, very well-known president, has been thrown by a particular mother when he was a baby because of the circumstances that that baby came from. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, everyone in this planet Earth has his own time and season to win. Amen. So clear those thoughts in your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so that when we are saying we are doing something, that's why I brought the scriptures out. Each name, each stones, God names those stones that they are stones, they are beautiful stones, but these stones has a human understanding or relationship attached to it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, reflection. reflection. So now let's go to... Uh, what the third one, third name means, um, that is Kubiku. Kabiku. So Kabiku in the first row, and that shall set it in on the setting. See what for four rows. Four rows. So the first row is what? Sadius to pass and Kabiko. Sadius to pass and Kabiko. So we've done Sadius and Topaz in two series now. So we're going to Kabiko, which, which indicates Levi. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So, uh, now, Levi means, Levi is a tribe, out of the tribe of Israel, that God called his chosen one. That is, is a tribe chosen to serve in the temple. Amen. You can see last one, the second one, we call it, uh, the second one is what? Is uh, Simon, which means aggressor. Praise the Lord. Mm. We are aggressive. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We are aggressive. And we really explain it. We expand on it. Expanding on it. So this one is Levi. Is a tribe chosen to serve in the temple. Praise the Lord. It also means attached or joined. So Levi is the is is a tribe that is, is dedicated to serve the higher calling. Amen. 
higher calling, which means that you have to free yourself from material things. Don't try to survive by material things. By what you personally, you have to sacrifice yourself for God. Jesus and Levi. So that stone, the third stones or the third fruit or the third month. Praise the Lord. What it means is reflection uh, through a thing called Levi and the meaning of that Levi. Because uh, it is through that name, Levi, we're able to understand what that stone means. And we're able to understand what the third fruit of the tree of life that is attached to the tree means also. So you have to attach yourself for a divine service. Amen. And we can see that in the Bible, uh, the whole church tribe of Israel, they are the chosen generation. We all of us as a child of God came from. Praise the Lord. So, which means that uh when um, Reuben was the first, <laughs> praise the Lord, Reuben was the first to enter eating the first fruit, it means that you are the beginning, it's a gate to enter. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you, can, if you can see, I don't know if any of us can check our phone, try to look for the breastplate of. Uh, of the priest on Google, try and see if you can get anyone and bring it out. You see that there are gates in between those things. Amen. In between those stones are gates. Amen. Hallelujah. So one Amen. link to one to one to one. It is a process we have to get to to serve God. You can see when Jesus entered the wilderness, Amen. he was tested and he prayed. Was aggressive in his spirit, and when he came out, everything he learned in the wilderness because everything everything about this trail of fruits he learned each of them in the wilderness. But when he came out, he started uh, playing out what he has learned. He started playing out everything he has learned. In the, in the school of the spirit, we are to understand God and to work out our salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the true in the wilderness, Jesus learned how to pray. He learned how to serve God. Even serving God helped him to overcome everything. Every temptation he overcome he overcame each of them. Hallelujah. So now let's go to um, James one. Sorry, Peter's uh, first Peter. First Peter says he said Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect. God's elects, exiles, scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who has been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ, and spring, sprinkled with his blood. He says, scattered. Scattered. God, especially at this time that a particular virus is going around the world, this virus is, can call it two edges sword. You can call it a rod and a staff. In a hospital. Hospital 1. Hospital 1, 1 to 2. 
So, uh, you can see that uh, the first man ate from the tree of life and then eventually fell by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because of that, now all the children of God, all his lungs, became sinners. They had the nature of sin. Now, through God, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, the whole world. God loved everyone that fell. All of us in the loins of Adam, he gave us his only begotten son. He said, but whosoever, now he's putting a choice on it, whosoever by the decision of your mind mm. believes in him shall not perish. Mm. So it means that according to the judgment of that falling of Adam, all of us were already a victim of death. The ending of what happened is to perish. But it now said, God so loved the whole world, everyone in the world. Because Satan never gave back to a child. Satan never had the opportunity to create anyone. So all of us, we fell in the, uh, we fell as Adam fell. So, for God to love the whole wide world, everyone, but it is not everyone, according to God. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, according to God, God wants everyone to be saved. But it's not everyone that will be saved, because it is, people love darkness, their light. That, that, darkness is so, so... I mean, it's 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 it's, it's kind of thing that glares the heart, glares the eyes. It's so it's so glaring. Things the loss and the darkness is so glaring. It's attractive, attractive and you know, I mean, our souls want things that will satisfy us. Amen. So because of that, it's not everyone. Let's say the truth. It's not everyone that will receive Jesus. For God loved the whole world. He gave his only begotten son. Now say, whosoever. I wish all of you can receive him. I wish all of you can come to Christ so that you will not perish. I have sent my son to die. I've, his death has saved everyone on hearts. But... The point there is that it now depends on your decision and your choice. Amen. Amen. According to the court of heaven, have according to the court of heaven, God has saved the whole world. But it is when you come to God that your save your savings, your salvation will manifest so if you don't come <laughs> the same judgment that are put on Adam if you hit this you will die that judgment is still <laughs> that judgment is still there concrete and firm but if you can come no problem you are saved but if you can, the judgment is still valid. But if you uh, come, then the judgment is cancelled. But if you don't, the judgment is still there. So it's your choice. So right now, God wants people who can serve him. Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray 
and seek my face. You can see that hand and hand. You can see the con what connects one to one. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. First thing is to humble yourself. God is talking to the whole wide world right now. Mm -hmm. He has sent his son to die. So it's not the will of God for you to perish. Because in the court of heaven, uh, that death that God said is valid. But now in another court of in this in another session in the court of heaven, salvation is uh, available. So now the death at the beginning is available. The life is also available. Even when Solomon finished building the temple, God told him, I should tell the children of Israel, He said, I have placed before you, before you, life and death. But I implore you to what? Choose life. Choose life. So God is telling us to choose life. So God has sent his son to die for the whole world. Yes. So according to the session in heaven, according to the judgment in courts, uh, the salvation of the whole wide world is, is valid. But it, now it depends on, on your decision for the manifestation to stay. Please look. Let me give an example. It's like I, I, I tell my child that if you can pass all your exams, if you can have at least A in all your subjects, I promise you, I've even bought your tickets. I promise you, we are going on a holiday to, um, let's say to, uh, um, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But if you can pass, so is it, the choice is yours. If you can pass, at least you have B. At worst, you have B in all your papers. We are going to Bahamas for holiday. And this is your ticket. I've booked it. You have not paid it, but I've booked it. I booked for the hotel. But if you can pass all your exams, that you pa you don't you are you are not you don't do well in the exam at all, you must have a place B. We are going on a journey. We go on holiday. We're going to spend two weeks. I will take you around Bahama. Every city in Bahama we're going to touch. So the boy is in your court. That's how that's what God says. That I've, I've used my son as a sacrifice to pay for your sin. But the decision is if you can come. That's the decision. So according to the court of heaven, I've cancelled mm -hmm. all your sin. Past, present and future. But you have to come. If you don't come, I, I can't force you in. It is if you come that I will know that you love me. If you don't come, then you don't love me. You are already... Uh, be judged. So God is looking for dedicated people who can serve Him. So that's why I say that coronavirus is a two-edged sword. God has died for the sin of the whole world. Are people are people coming to Him? Is this sacrifice? So his own beloved son going to go in vain and you can see God has waited and waited and waited because you see some people who say how can God kill people he loved no it's not like that for how long are you going to there are so much important things how long are you still going to waste time praise the Lord how many years is our year on earth And every one that God created 
People that are not even coming, they have destination in God. God has a plan for everyone. So now, the Bible says, uh, in, to God's elect, exile is scattered throughout the promise. It means that uh, this God's elect is scattered around the world. In US, Canada, Australia, wherever, Spain, Italy, wherever, China, Korea, Nigeria, South Africa, whatever. Just tell me the country. God children are scattered. But let me tell you, if you can call it scattered, if everyone comes to Christ, then everyone will say that. Everyone is what? Is elect. For God means that not everyone will come. So now it means that you are the elect because you can't say that. God is the elect. No. So you are the elect by coming. It is your decision that makes you the elect. <laughs> because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It means that according to God, everyone in the world is elect. But if it is when you come to God, that your election is certain. Your election is is uh, your election is endorsed. First of all, so God is looking for uh, God is looking for Levi around the world who can serve him in his temple. The Bible says that God is the temple of God. So it means that in us we have we have to also go <coughs> as physically you are walking around. Also in spirit, there's a spirit in man. So that spirit in man you have to go into that spirit in man, in yourself. You have to, you have to, some people will say, uh, I wasn't in spirit. It's because there's a spirit in you. Mm. So there's a spirit of God in you. Mm. There's also a part of you that is exposed to the flesh, to the world. Mm. So you are in person that the two sides or you have two parts in you, mm -hmm. two separated parts in you, that uh, I was in spirit means that you were not in that spirit of God that was in you. Praise the Lord. But God wants you not just to always uh, be in spirit and come out. He wants you to enter into the spirit and stay there. Stay there. Amen. God wants you to enter into the spirit and Amen. stay there. Amen. 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 Because it is when you now enter into the spirit and stay there, you can now call yourself a spirit being. If you don't stay here, you are not a spirit being. You are a man. You are a man that do You are a man that do two and four. And God doesn't want two and four. God doesn't want you to be yesterday and be no tomorrow. Praise the Lord. So God is just looking, searching for dedicated people can, that can come to Him and can stay in Him and can grow in Him. It's the spirit in man. And that spirit in man is one with you. But also, we are all exposed to the world. So that world wants to take the place of God in you. And the place of God, God also is want to take charge of your life. He, want, he said, I'm knocking. Anyone who hears. The confirmation that this is the spirit in man. The one that is in man is the one knocking. Amen. He's knocking. He can hear, come into me. Hallelujah. Amen.
Let's also open the scripture then at close and in the end. Okay, I have 10 minutes more. Romans um, 8, verse 28, verse 29. Yes. For whom he did for new, for no, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and who he justified, then he also glorified. That's my starting. So, it is when you come to God that you that will now align to what who God calls. It is your coming. So, uh, people should not eventually start blaming God and God. So, are you saying I'm not elect? No. It is your choice. You have to come. It is when you come, then you become the elect. So according to the according, according to God in the whole world, according to God by sending Jesus, you are the elect. But you don't come, you are not you are not yet the you are not you are not the elect. If you don't come, you are not the elect. If you come, then you become the elect. It is a matter of choice. It is a matter of choice. God doesn't want anyone to die. God wants everyone to come to repentance. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we should know that we're in the beginning. We are uh, in the beginning of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord has started. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is it Luke chapter Luke chapter four from verse eighteen? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You can see. Or to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So that is what is happening right now. God wants to know who and who. So if you are listening to this teaching, I'm telling you, <laughs> when God sent uh, Clark, to the uh, rod of Moses, he sent mine. But there is a separation between Egypt and Goshen, children of God and Goshen, the chosen children of God. We are here. So everything that happened never got to them. So if you are in Christ, you don't need to fear anything. Let the corona, whatever they call it, let them pass you. Let them stay within people that have it. You won't get to you. Because you are in Christ. You are not of this world. So you live here. But you are in heaven on heart. So that is what we are enjoying. That's why we don't fear anything. Then you will, you will, you will join the secret space of the most arch and high. Under the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it, into it, and they are safe. So we are safe. So you want to join us and be saved. Because it's the rod and the staff. The staff to comfort Moses. Because when he was in the wilderness alone, that's the only thing he had. The staff is to comfort him. 
Say your Lord and your star. Comfort. But the rod, he also comfort because the rod helped to protect him. When evil power is coming, he points the rod. And God will come out from the rod and do wonders. When they were at the tip of the Red Sea and they were confused, they don't know what to do. God said, Point the rod. Point your staff. It's your staff, but when you point it, it will become a rod. So it will open doors for you. And when they got to the wilderness and the Egyptian were coming, entering the way, like, Oh, you think you guys have escaped? You are coming for you. <laughs> God said, Oh, yeah, point that to your rod back to the thing. You can see? So this rod that is the comfort and the staff. So another phase of the rod and the staff is that the rod parts, it's used, God uses it to manifest his power. You know, to show that I am God and I can do and undo. Hallelujah. So I the people say it's from the devil. What? If it's from the devil, God would have healed it. But it's not, I don't think this is from the devil. Praise the Lord. I'm not assuming. Hallelujah. But come to Christ. Don't just accept this thing too. People are dying. Oh gosh. People are dying. And I'm not happy. People are dying every day. You don't know about people that died in April yesterday. People are dying. Check your news. Haida, I say it. I don't say it's everywhere. Check Google. It's the news. It's everywhere. People are dying. But God wants people to come. If they can come to Him, then they are, they are escaped already. Come to me, all you that labor and everything. I will give you what? Rest. I want to give you rest. I want to give you what is truly called life. What when you are passing through it, you will hate that life. But when you finish that class, you'll be so happy that uh, it is it is not easy, but it is it, it was worthy. Thank God I passed through it. Thank God I what? I passed through it. But well, you know the opposite side. When you are enjoying the things of this world, you will be enjoying it. But when you enter into the cage, then you start crying. Which one do you think is you prefer? When you start passing the life of God, you know? The reason you will suffer is because that thing will make you to die daily. That thing is removing flesh out of your way, out of you. And because you don't want the flesh to live, so you'll be crying. It's squeezing you, it's, you know, changing you, it's processing you day by day. So we are common, dedicated people, chosen people, people that are elect to come. Because they are sent Jesus to die for the world and he want the world to come to him. But when you come, <laughs> it's not the enjoyment first, but the enjoyment later. Because whatever the enjoyment of the world is the enjoyment first and the oppression later. And when you enter into that path, it's, it's only God that can save you. You enter into it, you enter into it forever. Let's give an example. Some let's give an example. People that are prostituting themselves to make money. They are enjoying the thing. But it has got to the level that they don't even they don't even know how to save themselves from it. They have been caged in it. Can you see? It has become part of them. They will say, I'm, I, I'm doing this because to take care of my friends or to take care of my siblings or to take care of my children. What about people who have the same thing you have? But they are doing other things that are good to take care of their kids. They are suffering if it's to fuck anything on their head just to make sure to take care of their kids. They are not doing. So life is about choices. If you don't get anything today, God has saved you all by sending Jesus. God doesn't want anybody to die. So, according to the call session of heaven, like I said, 
God has saved the whole world. But it is your coming that will determine if you are saved or you perished. You need to know how important choice is it, is it to God. Decision of your mind is very, very important to God. It is when you come that you become the next. God will not force you to come. He said, see what that woman said again. Romans 8. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For those God for name, we also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. So people may think that, ah, no, according to the scripture, God had already uh, selected some sort of. No, you come first, then you will see if you are not part of the selection. You come, receive Jesus, and see if you are not. He <laughs> says, The name of the Lord is. He said, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. So you are the righteous when you come. You are the unrighteous if you don't come. So it's a decision. Just come, and you see if. <laughs> Imagine if a, somebody that has already been condemned beside Jesus. On the tree, on the cross, the two robbers beside Jesus. Two. Their identity is what? Is they are what? Thieves. But one still came on the cross. What of it? And Jesus said, Today you meet me in paradise. He was the only one that didn't go to hell to meet Jesus. He said, Today you meet me in paradise. That's it. So, we also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son that it might be. Okay. Uh, moreover, whom he did predestine, then he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And who he justified, he also glorified. The first thing is who he predestined. So, can you say, that me now, you can see that me now I'm in Christ. As in, I'm not in Christ. Maybe somebody is preaching to me all this while. I don't come. I don't come. And I die in my sin. You can see that right now I'm in God. So let's assume that I didn't come and die in my sin. <laughs> can you see? So it's my choice. It's my choice. According to God, all of us were in the first Adam that God created. All of us, everyone on this earth. When the first Adam that died. So God has to raise this last Adam so that all of us in the first Adam can what? Can come. But it's now your decision, your choice. So God wants dedicated ones who can what? Who can serve him in his temple. God wants everyone to be Levites. Who can serve him in the Holy place, the priests. First Peter 2 9 he said, For ye have a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You can see God, if you know this way, you know that I'm close now. This way, you know that God loves everyone, even people that are dying now. Don't somebody has preached to them. Somebody has preached to them. If if God loved some people and didn't love some people, they will to make the gospel of Jesus to go to some people. What if he doesn't go? These two people. 
Push down where you are. Push Jesus to Jesus. Push this way you are. Push Jesus. Look, the work came to everyone. And the word of God has been coming around the world. Even most of the people that are dying that they receive Jesus. It's their choice. It's their choice. So God wants dedicated people who can serve Him, who can become royal priesthood, who can become holy nation, who can become peculiar people. Separated people, people that belong to him, praise the Lord. People that will manifest, will manifest his light. Hallelujah. So, if you are listening to me right now, wherever you are, come to Jesus. Just say, Have a time me if you know you want to dedicate your life and receive Jesus into your life. Say, After me, Lord Jesus, I humble my heart. I come to you today. Help me. I don't want to uh, be in this world. I want to be in Christ or to manifest in this world. Oh Lord, help me. I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe my heart that God raises me from the dead. I am saved in the name of Jesus. That's all. You are saved. It might be to you as if nothing happened. With just two or three letters and sentences of that prayers. That's it. That's it. Pass through whatever, whatever is. Even you can be among nurses and doctors uh, taking patients. It will not happen to you. They will just be looking at you that what is wrong with you? Why can't you use the mask? Because you are now you are now in the name of the Lord. The strong power. You are covered. Heaven made the middle of God is is covering you. You are seated far away from the power in the in Christ. So we are, God has given hearts to the sons of men. We are to manifest here. You cannot manifest here. You can manifest here. But the light of God is has overshadowed you. That's it. You are in secret of your side. Under the shadow of your mighty. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can harm you. Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me go, Pastor, to come and some songs. Just some songs, one song, and we'll finish fully. Hallelujah. God bless you. His name is Jesus, his name is 